Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking to you today about drafting court material, particularly focusing on property matters. My name is Susan Miranda. I'm an associate at Michael Lynch Family Lawyers and I'm joined by my colleague, Belinda. Thank you, Susan. To commence property and financial matters before a court, you will be required to file an initiating application, a supporting affidavit and a financial statement. The court produces a number of fact sheets, including kits to complete those documents on their website. If you are going to self-represent, I'd encourage you to access the court website early and have a read of those kits as well as those fact sheets, as they will assist you in completing those documents. When you're filing your court documents, you will also have to pay a fee to the court for the matter to be heard. If you are experiencing financial hardship, there will be a an ability to apply for an exemption to that fee. The last tip I'd give you is in relation to signing up to the court's portal. This is an online system and how the court communicates with litigants through the course of a matter and how you'll become aware when the respondent files their material. You may find that you've been served with uh, your former partner or ex-spouse's initiating application and court material. This means you're then the respondent in the family law matter. As a respondent, you will have 28 days from the date you were served to file your material in response. Your material will include a response to an initiating application, a financial statement and an affidavit. The initiating application will have a number of details you need to complete in relation to personal matters being your date of birth, your contact details and address, as well as details about the respondent. The initiating application will also require that you set out what interim and final orders you seek in relation to property and financial matters. Interim orders are those sorts of orders that the court needs to make because there's an urgency about the matter, or they, they are orders that will progress the matter forward for the court. Some sorts of interim orders are about disclosure, so the exchange of financial documents, the sale of a property if a mortgage repayment couldn't be met, as well as the valuation of certain assets if the values of those items are not agreed. Final orders set out what you seek to retain on an overall basis in resolution of this matter. The court requires that you particularise the assets and liabilities that you will be retaining or that you wish to transfer to the respondent or even sell. Ideally, you should set out those in enough detail that the court then understands what your position is. Where possible, the court does encourage you to put a percentage on what that looks like on an overall financial basis. Your affidavit is a very important document. Take your time. It is your story to the court, your evidence, which you want the court to take into consideration in relation to the orders that you're seeking. So try to ensure that you've addressed evidence, particularly uh, in relation to the orders that you are seeking in your application or your response. Uh, your affidavit should also include things like details of your relationship, uh, a schedule of assets and liabilities, evidence addressing the contributions of each of the parties to the relationship, as well as addressing what we term section 75.2 if you're married or section 90 SF subsection 3 if you're in a de facto relationship. There's a long list um, of, of those particular particular uh, issues that you will need to address in your affidavit. I'd encourage you to read through those sections and address them in your affidavit. Also remember there's a practice direction currently in the Federal Circuit Court in respect of affidavits addressing interim issues. They should be no longer than 10 pages in length and have no more than five annexures. Further to the supporting affidavit and initiating application, you'll need to complete what's known as a financial statement. A financial statement sets out your current income, expenses, assets, liabilities and superannuation interests for the court. A financial statement is like an affidavit in that it will need to be sworn under oath or affirmed before a prescribed witness. 
you will need to have regard to the rules in relation to full and frank disclosure as this financial statement sets out your full disclosure in relation to your personal financial circumstances. In that regard, I encourage you to read the rules that relate to full and frank disclosure as well as the court fact sheet about duty of disclosure. The financial statement is a complicated document and it sets out at the top of that document how you're best to complete it. The kit that the court has put together also gives you some tips on completing that. Those tips are that when you don't know the exact amount, you use a capital E to reflect that it's an estimate and you should always use whole dollar amounts and not refer to amounts with cents. These documents are complicated. You need to take your time to complete them. If you are a respondent, you'll have 28 days and you should use all of those 28 days to take the time to complete them. If you are commencing court proceedings, you have no time frame other than your own and when you want to file it, but you should take the time to review them, ensure that you've completed them to the best of your ability and provided them to the court in a form that will be accepted. Also, there will be an ability to amend them at a later time. If you can get them right from the beginning, you will put your matter in good step that you can achieve the result you want. Remember, if a divorce has been sought in your matter, you have 12 months from the date of your divorce to commence proceedings in relation to property or spousal maintenance. Make sure that you get some legal advice if you're going to be trying to draft your own documents or, or you may wish to use a legal representative to represent you in court. That means preparing your documents as well. These matters are complicated and each matter will turn on its own facts. Thank you.